Hey guys, John here. Before this episode of Not A Podcast gets started, I just wanted to let you know a few things about this episode and what we've got planned for the future of Not A Podcast. So, on this episode, we had on Eric, the lead singer and the lyricist for the band Remo Drive. You guys might have seen them getting a lot of claim as of recent, and I wanted to apologize just because I don't think the audio is that great, and it was a little bit awkward because we had it set up over a Google Hangout. He was recording his audio and we were recording ours. So, any suggestions for how to set this up because we're podcast noobs, let us know in the comments section down below what we should do, how we can make it better, how we can record somebody's incoming audio on like Skype or Google Hangouts or what is just the best method if you've ever done podcasting or something like that. We want to get the best quality for you guys. So if the interview is a little bit awkward in places, it's because he couldn't hear us and we couldn't hear him and we were also kind of hearing ourselves on a delay. So it came out a little bit weird, but still, I know you guys will enjoy it. It's really not that bad. I'm making it sound a lot worse than it is. And also, we've got some guests lined up for the future. We're planning on having on Johnny Gilbert and Alex Durame. You guys might know them, formerly of My Digital Escape, and now popular YouTubers. We're talking to a few people in the community, like The Rock Critic, and I'm probably going to reach out to Jared Alonji, ASAP, and there's a few other people who have shown interest in it as well. So let us know who else you'd like to see come on Not A Podcast in the future. Other than that, let's go ahead and cut to what we've got lined up for you this episode. And here we are with another episode of Not A Podcast, your favorite podcast that's not actually a podcast, but more of a discussion. Or is that what podcasts it are act, in general? It actually is a podcast. <laughs> it's, it's just under the clever guise of Not A Podcast. Anyways, I'm John <laughs> from ARTV. And I'm Infinity on Hannah. And today we've got a pretty cool episode for you guys. And something that we kind of teased, I think, in the first episode was the fact that we're going to start trying to line up some guests for you guys. And we've got a few people that have already confirmed with us pretty much that they're ready to come on. We just got to work out the logistics of it. And Hannah's actually going to be here. You're going to be here all summer. Yes. That's... So we'll be putting out episodes, hopefully, once or twice a month. Yeah. And uh, we might even be able to stack up a few so that we can go throughout the fall and that sort of thing as well. So thank you to everyone who supported the first episode that we put out. And today, uh, we're going to be talking about music festivals. And we've also got something else lined up. What else do we have coming towards the end of the episode? Today? We have a special guest, like we were just talking about. It is the lead singer from the band Remo Dr- Drive, they're up and coming, and his name's Eric, right? Yeah, Eric yes. from Remo Drive, the lead singer of the band. Uh, kind of an emo alternative band that uh, have recently gotten some recognition and attention, and I think it's going to be cool to sit down, chat with him, and maybe we'll even clue him in on today's topic uh, about music yeah. festivals, get his perspective on it. And music festivals in general, like, that's pretty much all people are talking about these days. Obviously, all the lineups are at it's this point. It's spring. That's when all the lineups, you know, start coming out. People are buying tickets, VIP packages oh. that cost more than anything I will ever be able to afford in my life. There's VIP packages <laughs> for Lollapalooza and some of these other ones that cost more than a car should. I don't know why I even looked it up, like, thinking that maybe we would be able to go to that festival for that, like, kind of, that dream died within, like, 30 seconds. Yeah, that was a very very short-lived dream, a short text conversation back and forth, like, oh, wow, look at this lineup for Lollapalooza. Let's start talking about the lineup, then. Uh, A lot of these festivals, I feel like a lot of the same sort of bands do go to these festivals. Like, there's always some big names that, you know, headline, and there's a lot of indie bands and other artists. Oh, yeah, I completely agree. But don't you also think that it's, like, a lot of the lineups are just so similar? It's like the the promoters all go for, like, the The same same people. people. It's catering to the same audience just like come to our festival we have this band but it's like so do we so which one do you pick but that's the thing and i think what it's basically come down to at this point is the fact that all of these promoters are just thinking that like well people aren't going to travel anymore you know i think maybe even 10 years ago five years ago uh people would have to travel hours you know or maybe halfway halfway across the country to go yeah look at woodstock that was like one of the first exactly and think about how many people came all the way out there exactly just for that and now i think what a lot of people are doing and i guess it makes sense to 
to an extent so they can appeal to more people. But, you know, everybody's got a music festival now. Everywhere in California has one. Everywhere across the Midwest. All and the even... big cities in America. And now even some of the smaller cities are, like, starting to have their own little, you know, festivals. They don't have too many artists, obviously. They're not huge like this. They maybe last a day or a weekend, but right. it's still a festival. Right. And even my little city mm-hmm. has a music festival. And I'm just <laughs> like, if we've got one at this point, then it's just like, of course. <laughs> course now Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. places all the way from Alabama, Everywhere. across across the country. Everybody's got a music festival. But the real question is, is it worth traveling to some of these? Because we actually are. I'll go ahead and throw that out there. Yeah. We're actually traveling for one. It's going to be a nice little getaway for a couple of days. We're going to Boston Calling Music Festival. But for a lot of people, the question is, is it actually worth like saving up the money, buying these expensive tickets, and then you Travel. see the lineup. Is it is the the lineup, you know, mm-hmm. for some of these things. Does would that make it make or break for you? Like if you had somebody oh. that wasn't playing <laughs> anything else, it's really expensive. It's really out of your way. Is it something that's still going to draw you it in? It just depends. Like I feel like that's what happened with at Lollapalooza. The Killers are playing. We've both never seen them. They Bucket never list. come around. They never tour. Like you know, especially to our cities. No. And we literally thought like because. Lollapalooza, they kind of overlapped with Boston Calling with a couple people. So we're like, maybe we could just switch to that one. But it was already like pretty much sold out and it's too far. Really, the VIP was the only thing left. These music festivals, (laughs) that's another thing. People buy up those tickets so fast. Exactly. And the thing is that I think it's a little bit unfair. I mean, I get it. But what I think is unfair is the fact that some of these price tiers, they'll start off super low. Like, for example, uh, you could buy Bonnaroo tickets. I mean, this was a few years ago. But you could buy, like, uh, the first level without the lineup being revealed. Why would you buy tickets? you don't even know what you're buying. Why would you buy tickets for something that you don't even know if that exists or something like that? And, uh, for example, it'll go up from there. But once the lineup comes out, it goes up to, like, 249 or 300 and then, yeah, and the hotel packages, which I understand that's like a good option, but I'm literally looking at the Lollapalooza options right now for like their hotel bundles, which includes the whole weekend. Right. Oh, you need. Oh, you want to come to our <laughs> festival and you want to stay in a king size room? Oh, that's going to be thirty five hundred dollars. Oh, you want two people? Sorry, that's going to be an extra two thousand dollars because Lord knows that everybody that goes to a music festival just it's, it's an extra two thousand dollars a person. I just that baffled me so much. Who is affording? this right like i don't care how good the lineup is but like that's not even worth it because it's only a weekend it's one set that you're going to see them play well that's why uh, that's another reason why i feel like music festivals are losing their credibility among true music fans because that's another point that i know we definitely wanted to bring up because a lot of the people that are going there and walking around they're they're well one they're obviously people that have a ton of money but they're two the people that go there just for the looks for the photos for the likes for the snapchats and the instagrams to like dress up and be in with the fashion listen to maybe one band that they actually like and And like know like a couple of songs from because it's cool to like them (laughs) like i know a lot of youtubers that are like the mainstream youtubers the like bigger vlogger ones that like are super like bohemian and like want to go for that look because it's like in right now but they literally only go for that and that really makes me mad because they can't afford it because they're making tons of money but like it's just unfair because like there's people that actually would love to go see all those bands right but the fact is that most of these people just don't even seem to be there for the music. And plus, if you look at some of the crowds, like even a Coachella crowd, for example, which I think Coachella is probably the most detestable of them all in terms of it. So it's basically a fashion festival that yeah. has a music background at this point. Literally, promoters will pay like influencers to go out there and wear their clothes and take a bunch of Snapchats. That's what it and is, it, yeah. You know? And that drives, that's infuriating because it's just like you're literally on your phone the whole time like walking around when somebody else could yeah. be there enjoying the music. But yeah, I think now they're just trying to cater to those type of people. It's becoming, because like we talked about, the prices are so high that like the normal person, the normal music fan can't, can't go, go <laughs> at all. It's not even an option. I've never been to a music festival, like a legit music festival. Right. This is going to be my first one. You went to one before. I went to Bonnaroo in 2012. And yeah. uh, like I said, things have changed so much in the past five years. It really was different because that was a time Snapchat really wasn't a thing then. Yeah. Uh, it was, that was like around the turning it point. It was the turning like... point. Bonnaroo had a great lineup that year. I called the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the Beach Boys, uh, Skrillex. It was a, a great diverse year. Yeah, sounds... Plenty, But the thing is, they, they've 
gone from getting plenty of bands that just have kind of like a punk and rock influence to more just like everything kind of sounds the type of same, yeah. you know, like from like like hip hop and like watered down kind the of rock indie, that's just like pop. indie indie pop. Yeah, that's another big one right there. And obviously electronic music as well because there's a lot of like outside influences in that and people can dance to it and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And I get adding that, but whenever your entire lineup is really based around the same type of bands, it just, it doesn't do that much for me. But what stood out to us, I think, about Boston Calling this year is that, one, we have been wanting to go to Boston for a while, and we're actually going to catch a Red Sox game. That's John always wanted to do that, so and actually, perfect. Yeah, and Hannah surprised me with tickets to the <laughs> Red Sox game. That was, like, the best Valentine's gift ever. Yeah, we're going to do that first, um, and then the festival's, like, the next couple days after that. Right, so I think the festival, it runs, is it Friday through Sunday? Yeah. Right, and, so, and we're seeing the game on a Thursday, but the reason, I th- it stood out to us, because obviously there was a good amount of people on there that yeah. I wanted to see. So which which artists or bands are the ones that pulled you for that? Well, for Boston Calling, uh, there's a few of the headliners, a few of the bigger ones. I'm looking at like the daily lineup now, and but there's a few like the XX that really stood out to me. I've been wanting to see them live for a long time, mm-hmm. and it took them so long to put out another record. I didn't know if they were even going to come back together. Another huge one for me, even though I'm not like the, a massive fan of them, but I've just heard that they're such a good live fan, and it's like one of those things that you really have to experience just because they're so big and popular in rock music and important in that scene tool that was a huge one for me i would like to see uh i'd like to see weezer in the 1975 again yeah, while we're there in the... those are pretty much my biggest ones because i really love both of those bands right right especially the 1975 and i've actually never surprisingly seen i was supposed to go see them once but i didn't get to uh, cage the elephant i'm a big fan of them and i just I, I think i recently put out a top 10 on them and i've definitely kind of been getting hyped up for that Run the Jewels was a big uh, rap get for me. I would say that was something that lured me in just because I'm not a huge rap head or anything like that, but it was something that really... Oh, yes, you are, John. <laughs> yeah, I am. You're such a rap head. Yeah. Whatever I, that means. I don't even know. I, I hear metalhead as a term. Maybe you wrap your head in plastic wrap. <laughs> and then and go to the festival and watch yeah, the babe, set. Yeah, that's what it is. That's... Uh, I get, Haven't you heard about the new uh, fashion statement that everyone's doing? Y- you know what? I'm going to start festivals. I'm gonna start a trend this year at Boston Calling. <laughs> I really hope that it's not super hot because I'm going to suffocate. It's going to be... <laughs> Oh god. I feel like another one for me, the big one of the bigger ones for me is Car Seat Headrest. We both love oh, them. Yeah. That's gonna be incredible <sighs> to see, Been dying to see some of those live. songs live. They're so good. It's gonna be fantastic. I hope somebody in the crowd is passing a joint around now. Please. Please. No, you know they will. You know they Are will be. Um uh Mac DeMarco is another one that I'm wanting to see. He's a really cool um uh, indie star. I'll have to show you if yeah, I don't know if I've showed you his music I before. So. Um Pup is somebody that Pup. I think we both like. Uh smaller kind of like man. punk rock band and something in a live setting. I could just imagine that being crazy. crazy. I'm hoping that since they're smaller, probably playing a smaller stage, that it'll be kind of cool, we'll get a closer spot. Yeah, it won't that be sort so of thing. condensed. But Let's. T- we should talk about how we almost didn't get to go, even though we bought the tickets. This was like literally maybe a week or two ago. We were sitting down um, because we hadn't had our plane tickets yet or like right. a place to stay or anything. We were trying to get that out of the way because prices do go up closer to the time. Right. And so all we had was the actual festival tickets and we we're like, okay, how are we going to get there? We talked about driving, which would take like... 15 hours almost. Probably would have to split it into like maybe two days. Which would just suck. I would have and to take an extra day off work. And yeah. John has a bad back, so we don't want to do that. I don't want to be in a car for that long. Yeah, and then um, the plane tickets, like, we kept, you know, trying different options, and it was just, like, becoming so expensive, and we tried, like, bundle with hotels, bundle without a hotel. Like, the hotels was the thing that was, like, tripping us up, because they were so overpriced right. in Boston. Like, I know I know Boston's, like, a, a pretty city. huge city, and yeah. especially around this time, there's probably going to be a lot of people booking hotels. But the cheapest thing that we could it was like 650 bucks or something like that for what was it, four nights that were staying. I know, and yeah. that's just oh man, I, I don't know. Like, and that, along with the plane ticket, it adds up to be a huge amount. It's gonna be like over a thousand. But uh, you had a saving idea, like yeah, something to save the I entire thing. I randomly thought like Airbnb. I've heard of that. I know like YouTubers who have done it before, and I just didn't really know anything about it. So we decided to look that up, and the rates for that were so much incredible. More, it was yeah, like. Cheap. It was seriously like 
the praise hands emoji going off yeah, in my head because I was like, oh my god, we're saved. We looked into that and luckily, you know, we found a guy and uh, we got that all set up. So mm-hmm. we're going to be staying in basically yeah. just someone else's house for I, a few And days. it's seriously like, if that's something that you guys are like out there and you're trying to go to a music festival. Or if you're trying to travel anywhere, really. Obviously look at the reviews and see what other people are saying and that sort of thing, but that can be a great option, honestly. It's that's becoming something... a bigger thing now, so. If I put a survival guide out, if I had to say for like a music festival how to afford it and how to get there and that sort of thing look into airbnb and uh you can just rent somebody's it's it's a private room that we're getting and there's a lot of different options too for different places and it's very close in fact remember the hotels we were gonna have to drive or else that was another thing like we don't have a car so we'd have to get an uber and that can be who knows how much that's gonna be in the middle of boston during a music festival and plus if no hotels that we could find were closer than 20 minutes (laughs) that's a lot and plus then the place that we found now is within 10 15 minutes yeah so it's not too bad so i think it's gonna work Work out good, and I think a lot of you guys probably think that we can afford a lot of stuff because <laughs> we are YouTubers. But like, you guys don't even know the half of it. We're not if we're if we don't have like at least five hundred thousand subs, that we're not gonna. Right. We're not just like throwing money around and stuff. Like literally today, I let go. <laughs> I just I was crying as I went out to the mailbox to let go of about a thousand dollars because of taxes. Because YouTube doesn't take taxes out yeah. of your out of the money that you earn with them. So that's always. Uh, something that breaks the bank once yeah. a year. So that was another thing we were like, how are we going to do this? Because I knew taxes were coming up. It's, it was just really stressing both of us out, but luckily we did find It worked out. We got it something. all paid for. But something, one more point that I'll tack on to that is how did this all start? We were in Cancun. Yeah, we were actually in Cancun. I think when the, wasn't it when the when lineup, the lineup and the tickets went on sale? We had like talked about going before, but we didn't know, you know, who was going to be. Right. And the was. lineup rolled out along with the tickets and we were like right there and we were like we were getting a good price tier like we weren't getting one of the more expensive ones it was like one of the very first ones and i put the tickets in my cart and i was looking to try to do the payment plan option and somehow eventbrite the planners of this just charged me i put it like i'd already put in my card because i was thinking it was going to try and process me for like a payment plan or something like that that's what it said it was going to do and it was like just kidding we're going to charge you the full amount Right and now. And that came out of nowhere. And like, we were in Cancun and we were we like... We needed money too. Like, we were like, we have to get home. And that was pretty much bankrupt on the way home I think home to I had Cancun. to transfer like a couple hundred dollars into your account temporarily. Just to get it through until like my next paycheck. Because Gross. I was just like... <laughs> that wasn't exactly the best thing in the world. But at the same time, I guess I got it all out of the way at once. Yeah, we just pulled the trigger. <laughs> yeah, we really we're went going. for it. <laughs> yeah. And everything else uh, fell into place. And that's something that if we had to recommend to you guys, if you're going to a music festival or something like that, obviously plan your finances in advance and that sort of thing. But just sometimes you have to, if you really like want to get away, want to do the trip, sometimes you just got to do it. You know, got to go, got to go for it. And we went, (laughs) and we went for it. I think the last thing that I wanted to say about music festivals before we get into our interview Mm -hmm. uh, with Eric from Remo Drive is the fact that lineups have changed so much just in the past like five to ten years and while this one i mean i'm not in love with the entire lineup it's it's Mm, worth going for me like it's worth going but it's not one of those things where it's just like oh my god there's not i don't think there's too many lineups that really just made me go like Oh my god, Honestly, like this music festival I have to go. Lollapalooza's lineup was like, oh my god, but like it's just the price thing right, right. and it, the distance. It was re- yeah, there's uh, If I think that I, was closer, I'd feel like I would definitely think about. I mean, I counted off what like 40 at, at That's like artists a huge that, number that I'm interested in for seeing one on festival. Lala. Like same here, like there were so many. Like holy shit, they really got everyone. Like right. they're so lucky. But I, I, you know, I feel like a lot of people are just like going to these overseas festivals. Like I, it's ridiculous. I think the biggest yeah. one that I saw that I'm so so jealous of is I hope I'm saying this right. It's it's in Belgium, Germany. Rock Workster. Workter. Workter. Uh, rock worked her. Everybody from System of a Down to Blink-182 to Kings of Leon to the Foo Fighters to Lord. I know Lord's playing a lot here, but a lot of these others aren't playing a ton in the U.S. Right. It's just like, can we please get something in the United States <laughs> like this? There's so many rock festivals like I overseas. Feel like, yeah, like Soundwave always has a huge lineup. I think Brooming the Horizon did that one before. That's in Australia, right? Yeah, I believe yeah. so. That's going to be the thing that gets Fall us to Boy. Australia, babe, one of these we days. We got it. I would love to. One of these years, the lineup's going to be so good that we're not going to be able to refuse it. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, I think that wraps up our discussion on music festivals, guys. We're going to go ahead and transition over to uh, chatting with Eric. Uh, don't forget to check out Remo Drive. We will put the link to their band camp in the description down below. Show them some love. And uh, as transitory music, I'm going to play a little bit from their new album. Living Guys, as promised, we've got Eric from the band Remo Drive with us for the second part of our podcast today. Thanks for taking time out of your band life and everything like that. I know you guys just came off of your album release show. Thanks for coming and chatting with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, um, fresh off of that show, like, what uh, what's the reception to the album been so far? You guys just dropped it, and for anyone who don't know who Remo Drive are, I would say, is it fair to say a mixture of like emo, alternative type music? Yeah, definitely. That's uh, yeah, we fall somewhere under that umbrella. <laughs> uh, what was the energy like at the uh, album release show that you guys just played? It was probably one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Uh, we're used to kind of like just playing. Uh, pretty small shows kind of and this was by far like the biggest thing we've ever done as a band and like uh right that's, that's awesome so it was like a, it was a sold out show if i'm not mistaken yep yep that's uh we like asked it like how many people like that was their first time seeing us before and like it was like almost everybody there so that was pretty wild right like, just like <laughs> Yeah. Now, how much of that do you think is owed to, like, the Needle Drop, for example, who <laughs> just covered your music? Oh, do you think a lot of people found I, out about you and went to the show from that? I'm sure so much of it is related to that, and then, like, the, the Reddit <laughs> stuff. and that's, I, agree, uh, I agree. So, um, you guys, starting off, like, uh, how long has Remo Drive actually been a band? Um, we've been, well, I guess uh, my brother and I, the bassist, uh, Steven, we've been playing together since... We've been really young. Like I think that I started playing guitar when I was in like fifth grade, and Steven started playing bass when he was in probably like seventh grade. And uh, yeah, that so was been... actually going to be one of my questions to oh, see yeah. like when you guys actually did get interested in music. So that was kind of yeah. like a thing that you've. It's like a passion of yours for a while, right? Yeah, that's something that we've been doing. I, I think like I mean like we started to all like being involved in music really young. Like I think Sam started playing drums at some ridiculously young age, and like. Like, Steve and I started with piano lessons and stuff, and, uh... Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, that, that... Nobody in the band, if I'm not mistaken, you guys are all 21 or else less, right? Oh, uh, yep. That's, uh, Sam and I are 19 right now, and then, uh, Steven is 21. He just turned 21. Very cool. So, you guys are pretty much, you know, fresh out of high school, and I think me and Hannah were both kind of <laughs> curious, like, what do your parents, like, think about, like, the whole band Are thing? they supportive of it? Because I know a lot of parents can be, like, you know, do the college thing, you know, how do they feel about this? Yeah, like, uh, our parents are super supportive, like, uh... Good. They're, uh, they've always been, like, really great, like, um... I remember, like, my dad used to always take me to, like, guitar stores on the weekend and stuff and just, like, hang out there all day, sort of, and, like, no, yeah, they've they've always been, like, really supportive of us playing music and, like, uh, kind of, like, I think once they, like, noticed that, like, it was something that we were, like, seriously interested in, and, like, they, I think they were just kind of excited for us because, I, like, I don't know, I was the type of kid who, like, didn't really do well in like sports and stuff and I'd always just want to quit oh. all the time so when they saw something that I wanted to stick with I think that kind of excited them so right and I think I, I if I'm not mistaken you control the Remo Drive Twitter account mainly I think you tweeted out the other day that you were driving around with your dad actually playing the album for him yeah <laughs> that's uh <laughs> he like once we got the CDs like in like uh he was immediately like can we listen to it so <laughs> oh, wait, no, hold on a second cds are in you know john from ARTV and infinity on hannah both are definitely gonna have to get a copy of that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um i also wanted to ask transitioning from just like obviously the band kind of like getting into i guess more of the spotlight as you guys get more attention and acclaim and that sort of thing like, can you can you envision the band playing like bigger shows, and what's going to change for you, kind of as the voice and the front man as the of the band? Um, let's see. Here. I'm trying to think. I missed a little bit of that because of just my headphones being weird. 
but uh oh sorry it. just basically to sum it up but like how like do you see your band like playing like bigger shows in the next few years and the topic of our episode today was actually music festivals do you think that you could see Remo mm-hmm. Drive doing that in the next couple of years yeah that's uh we've been like uh really like lucky lately with every like all these people that we've kind of like been watching lately have been like reaching out to us like I don't know, and, like, uh, we got super lucky, like, Sorority Noise uh, has us playing a show with them in Chicago, and that's going to be... I saw that. Yeah. That's, uh... They were, like, one of the first, like... Yeah. (laughs) They were, like, one of the first, like, CDs I ever bought from, like, Top Shelf's web store. So that's, like, really cool to be playing with them. And, like, uh... Um, but it, it, like, have you seen any of, like, the music festival lineups this year that you would just really want to jump on? Yeah, that's, uh, we've also, like, uh, I think that we were, like, we've just got, like, into, like, a booking agreement with, uh, the same people who book for all those, like, really great, like, emo and indie bands, kind of, so I think hopefully we'll be doing more stuff just, like, like that, kind of, like, playing more venues rather than houses in Minnesota and, like, right doing just, like, more, like, I don't know, it'll be cool, I think. Yeah, definitely, especially as you get to expand touring and see different places. I think that's got to probably be one of the coolest aspects of being in a band in the first yeah. place. Definitely. it's uh, We've done a couple of like DIY-type tours like up to this point, and uh, I think it's like uh, definitely one of the coolest things is just meeting all these like different like people that we... I don't know if we weren't playing music, we'd never meet these people who we have a lot in common with and are just like, it's really cool just like seeing that, I don't know, all over the, all all over the country that like, you're kind of just like, not alone. There's a bunch of people who are weirdos too. So it's definitely (laughs) all over the place and come into like your show to rock out with you and the songs that you wrote. Um, that was another thing that I think we wanted to ask about just some of the inspiration behind the music on your debut album, greatest hits. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the music videos in particular really catching my eye? Who's the mastermind behind those creative fucking videos? I'm so impressed. Um, it's kind of, I think, all of us sort of had parts in different videos. Uh, for the You're Killing Me one and the Eat Shit one, those were kind of my babies. <laughs> what about uh, You're Killing Me? Because that one in particular sees the band just kind of playing like as you're like walking through the streets. And I really like the camera work on that one. And uh, the art school video as well. I, that's probably my favorite one so nice far. Nice choreography there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's... Uh, Sam's a uh, show choir teacher from high school actually directed that art school one like uh oh, that's cool so that's pretty cool like uh he also like uh the video like looks so much better than any of our other videos too like just as far as like production value <laughs> right so that's kind of cool too, and it came out like, like at a good time you but, dropped uh, that right around uh the release of greatest hits if I'm not mistaken yep. that's perfect yep. just to see you guys like before getting... the album came out right right now, uh, something that I saw in your AMA over on Indie Heads was the Weezer mm-hmm. love. Yeah. <laughs> Pinkerton for life, right? Oh, yeah. Pinkerton all the way. <laughs> Do you really like uh, Is that like the album that's like inspired you more than anything else? I, I would say that like that was the first album that I, I think I really like head over heels, like fell in love with. And right. Like, uh, around the same time that I fell in love with that was, like, uh, I don't know, it was kind of when I was first just getting into, like, a lot of, like, indie music and, like, stuff and just, like, stuff that was kind of weirder than, I don't know, because I was a metalhead before I was into, like, this type of stuff. Right. And, uh, that, like, Pinkerton, because it has that kind of aggression and power with it, but also kind of the, I don't know, softness, too. Like, it was kind of the first album that really appealed to me that wasn't a metal album. Right. So... Well, I can see elements of that in your own music. Like, for example, yeah. Crash Test Rating. Uh, that's my favorite yeah. song on Greatest Hits. And you can see there's more of an explosion in some places, especially with, like, the kind of, whoa. And then, like, going back into, like, the slower ending of the song. Is that something yeah. that, would you say, is Weezer-inspired? Yeah, definitely. That's uh, I think it's almost hard for me to kind of escape the, the Weezer influence just because I've spent so much of my life like 
I guess since like early high school, like <laughs> listening to their music, like I remember, uh, I don't like one of my, uh, like probably like the last year I had like a Christmas list was like, I had the Pinkerton deluxe edition on it. And nice. it was, that was like when I was in like ninth or 10th grade. And it was, I don't know. I, around that same time I was into like neutral milk hotel and like, I don't okay. know, like, uh, I think the Pixies were another big band for me. Like I loved, uh, like bossa Nova at that same time. And it's like, so basically you were like really into some nineties music. Right. Yeah. I was a huge nineties, like just kind of, geek at that time because it was kind of like the right marriage of rocky stuff and then also just more like kind of like led me into finding some more enjoyment and softer music too just coming from that metal background so it's right right i think the uh the last thing that we really wanted to talk about was kind of tying it all together with the theme of the opening part of our podcast today um what out of all of the lineups that you've seen for music festivals this year, what's one that you have to go to? And like, what's like the best lineup that you've seen out there? Oh my God. Uh, there's so many cool lineups that, that are happening this year. I know. Um, I guess uh, the one thing for me is I'm not a huge festival person because I always kind of get like uh, sort of just like overstimulated kind of, because right. it, but then again, I haven't been to many festivals, so maybe I just am saying that because I don't know anything about it. But, uh, that's, uh, I think anything that has like, I've seen Joyce Manor on a few and they're one of my favorite bands too. So I'd love to see them again because they, they did like a, like a cover of, uh, you gave your love to me softly by Weezer last time I saw them. And that was a lot of fun. Nice. And, uh, then our buddies in, uh, this band called Hippocampus, like, uh, yeah. they're a band I that just, I think I'd have I just covered their with. album a couple of weeks ago. It's they're, they're really impressing me. Okay. Right. That's, uh, yeah, they've been super great to us. Just, like, uh, Sam used to be in a band with, like, the uh, two guys from that band, like, when he was a kid. So they've it's kind of been cool, like, I guess, watching them grow and then, I guess, them kind of cool. helping pull us up. Right, so. right. <laughs> Um, do you think, like, music festivals in general, like, especially with, like, the crazy price of, like, some of these, do you think, like, even though if the lineup is stacked, do you really think it's worth, like, for example, 3500 bucks for a VIP package at Lollapalooza? Um, that's, uh, for me, I'd say, I'd say probably for me, no, but for a lot of people, I think it's, like, if, like, people are into that, like, uh, more, like, very social, like, uh, like get together right. type thing that it's like yeah, totally worth we it pretty, because it's like <laughs> we pretty much agreed with you we were talking about that earlier and how like a lot of people kind of go to these festivals just to go I feel like because they have the money to go or just for yeah. the social or like the appearance on social media afterwards type thing like Coachella yeah. basically yeah that's uh yeah like uh I don't know I just like uh I feel like I have a lot more trouble like just focusing in like a uh, big environments like that like I think my favorite place to see music is just small cap venues kind of right because it's I feel like intimate, I, there's yeah. just yeah would it, less would it be intimidating to you do you think like actually playing like with Remo Drive your band like a headlining not a headlining but even like on a smaller stage at a music festival yeah no, that's uh I think I'd definitely be that's I, I'd definitely probably be pretty nervous just because that's so many people and uh, it's also I think uh, a lot of like festival goers I think consume music differently and I feel like they I'm not sure if they'd be receptive to us or not but hopefully I mean that's uh, I think it depends on where you guys would actually be playing what type of festival yeah definitely. I think somewhere like Riot Fest even might be good yeah that would be that's one festival that I always look at the lineup and I'm like damn that's really cool <laughs> like that's uh how do you feel about Warp Tour? That's uh, I've only been to I think one Warp Tour in my whole time as like a, a music listener. But the one time I went, it was really cool. Like uh, I don't know. I went to see uh, the like the two main reasons I went was so I could see Bad Rabbits, uh, which are like this like, soul like uh, I don't know, just kind of like funky fun band. Or I guess now they they're kind of going in more of a rocky direction. Right. But uh, would you ever want to like, play uh, that festival? Really great. I don't know. They have like some sweet like. Um, I'm not sure. I, I like uh, I uh, one of our buddies did merch as like a, like a person like for Warp Tour, 
he was saying that it was kind of grueling but i mean i feel like it would be <laughs> cool just to kind of like i don't know be a part of like something like that, i know like a traveling. so many smaller bands that you know they're kind of nobodies they go on warp tour and by the end of that they're like blown up so much so i know it definitely does help a lot of bands get um, out there my headphones are cutting out again though no. Sorry, it's basically the gist, like, basically, like, a lot of bands who will go on Warped will end up blowing up by the end of it, like, we've seen in past years, like, several bands do that, and I think it's always a good place for some smaller bands to get some exposure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I think it would, it's definitely one of those things that it's kind of, like, the exposure would be really cool, but there's also just, I feel like, uh, lately Warped has kind of had, like, that <laughs> kind of loaded, uh, thing going on with it with all the just weird stuff happening but i don't know i right. think it's a it's a cool thing and it definitely introduces a lot of kids to like a lot of really neat music so right i don't know that's uh well eric before we go today um where can people find your music if they want to check out remo drive what's the best way to connect with the band um i think probably the best way is uh i don't we're on pretty much every like digital distributor so i guess whatever uh, people's preferred method is that's the probably the easiest and uh, but we do uh, we're gonna be putting like CDs and stuff up on Bandcamp so if there are any physical media people uh, I guess that'll be there and then we should be getting I don't know we're trying to figure out vinyl right now so maybe that'll be a possibility too. That's that's definitely something that I John's will be. John's very excited. Yeah, I'll be adding that to the collection <laughs> ASAP. Um, yeah, so we'll put a link to your band camp and to the album on Spotify if anyone wants to check it out, which we both highly recommend. Yes. <laughs> and uh, other than that, that concludes this episode of Not a Podcast. Check out Remo Drive in the description down below. Both myself and Hannah's links are down there as well. And we'll see you next time.